Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Tuesday, February 18th, 8 p.m. Mountain Time, 2020. The models are in, and they're not funny. A heavy blizzard, heavy snow system will be moving up midweek through the central U.S. in areas already saturated, putting more pressure on the Mississippi River Valley. Heavy snow moving into Washington and Oregon to continue with the epic ski year. Keep calm, it's boom time. Total snow mass for the Northern Hemisphere, excluding the mountains, is going vertical off the charts. Over 500 gigatons above normal currently, and we have four to six weeks of winter to dump more snow. The global warming goodness. You know what to do. Snowfall leaderboard for storms that blew away expectations Monday in Minnesota. Say it ain't soda, but it was. <laughs> Look at that. Would you just look at it? Hello, there I am. Heavy snow fell in areas predicted to get light snow, but who know? <laughs> Record snowfall at the airport, nine inches in some areas of Missoula, Montana. Looks very familiar. Oh, and another familiar site, Monday snowfall tied Rochester's record. Hello. Record after record. Breckenridge records the snowiest February ever. Ever! As snowstorm continues to bury Summit County. Ever. With 10 inches overnight and 7 inches and 7 feet this month. <laughs> it's officially a ton of snow. Ho, ho, ho. With more than 7 feet of snow, the deepest February on record at Breckenridge Ski Resort. There is still 12 more days of the month left and tons of snow in the forecast. More than 32 feet at Breckenridge, according to Open the Snow. The 2018-19 season, Summit County has more than 32 feet of snow. Did you hear that? A bitter blast of Arctic hair has brought ice volcanoes erupting on Michigan's beach. And the videos, well, they, they won't play. There they are. They're awesome. Man, big up to Fox News on that one. It was a blast. Denver inching towards all new all-time February snow record. Denver, they've been bitching in Denver about no snow forever because they barely get any snow. So that's a different story. Snow broke weather records in Wichita last week. More could fall on Kansas, and we'll get to the models in just a second. Let's check out the analyzer. These are your last 48 hours. Hours of power is heavy snow in the Cascades. One to two feet. People are texting me two feet or more in Idaho, Montana region. Heavy snow. There it is up at Steamboat. 18 to 24 inches in the last 48 hours. We have lake effect snow. Heavy snow hitting Michigan, Wisconsin. Two little points southern and northern Minnesota and a little bit uh, in upper, upstate PA and New York there. Historic floodwaters in the Mississippi have and are receding as we speak. Let's look at the river gauge at Jackson. Hello. The peak will end now tonight and it will start dropping off, but that doesn't mean it's going to not come back up. So good news for those that have been evacuated. They will be allowed back in their homes in a few days, hopefully, maybe a week's time. But the Pearl River at Jackson is currently at 36.8 feet and maintaining that for at least 48 hours. But this is not boding well. Flooding already in February. What about March and April? Even May. Do you remember how long the flooding lasted last year? Until July. So hopefully we'll get those uh, crops in. But it doesn't look good for the southeast. Birmingham, Alabama. Take a look. First alert. Increasing flash flood threat across the area. More rain possible for Wednesday night, Thursday morning. Increasing flood threat, flash flood watch is in effect for the areas through 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. 
rain and storms have impacted our northern areas through most of the day. And we're starting to see flood reports in locations like Brooksville and Bluntsville and Blunt County. Yeah, my kind of county. Winter weather moving across the northeast. Heavy rain returns to the south. A storm will slide across the northeast today with snow and some ice accumulations possible to the south. Heavy rain and additional flooding is possible from Texas to South Carolina in western Alaska. Strong winds and heavy snow will continue to bring blizzard conditions there. Heavy rains and winds, high rough surf will continue across America, Samoa through Wednesday. Who know? -a? And winter storms and watches are issued for Nebraska, eastern, southeastern Colorado and parts of, yes, you guessed it, Kansas. And now look, wind chill warnings issued for the entire northern tier of Minnesota, almost all of North Dakota. And it'll tippy touch of the northeast of Montana. So stay warm tonight. It's going to be chilly up in the Billy, wherever that is. That's the northern part. Let's check the models. I just named that. I just named it the Billy. And we're back. Sorry about that. Let's check the models. And here is your Wednesday, Thursday. And you can see that storm that's going to be depositing that Extra snow in Kansas, a little bit in Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus, as well as Nebraska. Not insignificant. And look at how this storm, this is not in the headlines yet. You're the first to hear this. The coast of South Carolina, I'm sorry, North Carolina, the coast of North Carolina is going to blow up. The entire state of North Carolina is going to see some snow -a this week. And that will begin Thursday into their Friday overnight. And heavy snow could fall on the coast. Uh, helping with some snow deficits in that region. They only receive up to eight inches of snow in many areas, but there will be uh, eight to 10 inches in some regions, according to the models, especially the mountains and the coast. So we'll keep a close eye on that. And the second system, bringing that heavy snow to Washington and Oregon. Look at that. That is Sunday through Monday into Tuesday. And then heavy snow moves into the Rocky Mountains, breaking more records at those ski resorts. And then that blizzard that we forecast through the mid Craton, take a look at that. Southern Minnesota, Northern Iowa, whew, it's gonna be a big one. Even Wisconsin picking up some big numbers, Nebraska. Uh, these numbers just went way up and the new model run. So we're gonna be watching this closely because this is not gonna start to hit until Wednesday, February 26th or the 25th is actually when it begins here. Tuesday, the 25th, it will start developing and the 26th, is the big is the big show. So we're gonna keep a close eye on this one. Follow the channel for more updates. Extreme cold warnings ended for parts of all of Northern Canada. And they were cold yesterday, especially this morning. And let's talk about Storm Dennis flooding out regions like South Wales, Hedfordshire, Wolshestar, Trappetshire. Everyone underwater, the Queen Mother even drowned in this one. It's amazing. More flood warnings and watches than ever. And it's not looking good for the spring. Take a look at this boom. Boom! There is a snow system moving into Europe Thursday, Friday, February, Wednesday. Holy. First of all, heavy snow in northern UK is going to be pummeled by this event. If you've been missing out in Scotland and the UK in snow, it's coming. So you better not be bumming. And we're look, using the CMC model here, which is lenient. So we're going to keep a close eye on whatever that this system is that's going to absolutely slather the global warming goodness everywhere as we enter March. Whew. Keep a close eye on that seismic update. Biggest boomer of significance, 5.2 north of Svalbard, Svalbard up in the Arctic Circle. Heavy activity building on the west coast of the U.S. Most significant 3.1 popping off just moments ago in Olancha, California. 1.1 kilometers off the ground, according to the USGS. That's off the surface. So the earthquake actually happened 1,100 feet off this in the air, according to that number. I don't get it. But it's official. Popo volcano. The activity of the volcano continues at moderately high levels with dozens of eruptions over the last three days. This one looking amazing. Recording one minor explosion that generated an ash plume rising 3,280 feet the other day and drifted northwest. Additionally, recorded 395 minutes of tremor, 248 emissions of water vapor gases and light ash content. And that is a ton of emissions. Even like if you ate beans, that would be a lot. Worldwide Volcano News Update, also. 
puffing, Sakurajima puffing, Nevados Chilan, everything, normal activity, except Mayon. Now, Mayon has some uh, inflation that we have to keep a close eye on, as well as the Rakianis Ridge in Iceland, increased earthquake activity. Report uh, yesterday, increased earthquake activity on the Rakianis Ridge, west of Pjernburn Mountain, close to Grindic Town. Inflation increasing in a cluster of seismic uh, tremors. Look at that. So we're just waiting it out. And as we predicted two years ago, it is my belief that the eruptions worldwide will begin in Iceland. And that will begin, be the beginning of the ending. Shopper slam Amazon's ridiculous packaging as Jeff Bezos dumps $10 billion to activists. Yes, he's giving it to activists to fight fake climate change. Now, this rich, bald schmuck, if I may call him that, will send like you a pencil eraser in a seven foot box the next day. And a very out of touch human being. He could save billions of dollars on the cardboard packaging and the idiots packaging it alone by just chucking stuff in a bubble wrap. But that's plastic and we don't want to pollute the earth. So we'll just do it with deforesting all the trees for corrugated cardboard. Now, I'm not arguing. I love, I just order single items each time from Amazon to get the maximum amount of boxes because I think boxes are reusable and awesome and they send out some pretty good boxes. And if I can't use them, they're awesome for composting new beds, killing weeds and doing all kind of other stuff that I need to do here at the ranch. So big thumbs up to Jeff Bezos for keeping my products cheap, filled with the coronavirus and extra cardboard for gardening. That's a boom. That's like the Bezos boom of the night. Skeleton found in cave could reveal Neanderthal death rites. This, these skeletons 40,000 plus years ago buried with feathers. Yeah, we we're just hunter-gatherer idiots. We didn't know anything. And 38, 35,000 years before that, we were feather, burying people with feathers. And now this neuroscientist discover engine of consciousness hiding in monkeys' brains. Now, a paper was published that they discovered the engine of consciousness. So I was very excited to learn about what they discovered. And guess what they discovered? Yeah, nothing. Yeah, it's an, an embarrassment to actual science and scientists in the neuroscience field that they what they discovered was the part of the brain that's activated when the monkeys wake up. And then they further explain in the paper that what they mean by consciousness is being awake as opposed to asleep. Now, I believe that, that that's pertinent, but they're not using the correct terminology for awake. And when we say awake, we mean something much different. And certainly nothing to do with consciousness in this uh, terminology. They must be baffled. Ancient engravings of warrior with elaborate hairstyle and pronounced butt discovered in Scotland and it's quite a good thigh. Yes. Very nice thigh and a nice buttock right there with a spear. Very manly man. With a bowl cut that looks like a talentless cut that. Anyway, these are supposed to be from the Roman era. And these big buttocks, <laughs> spear yielding white dudes with bad haircuts were preventing the Romans from attacking them whoever they were. Yeah, actually they have a name. They're called the the Pilths, the Perths. Let me see. I read this hours ago. My goodness. How can I remember all this? Oh, uh, yes, the Picts. The Celtic speaking group uh, living in this region called the Picts were defending it from the Romans who came to steal everything. But the big, bu big buttocks, funny haircut guys apparently won out. Or maybe they didn't. Do your own homework. The links will be below. Perfectly preserved 6,000-year-old leaf that fell on an elm tree was discovered by archaeologists amidst the release of Blagovich. <laughs> the complete schmuck. I don't get that. Anyway, here's the leaf they found 6,000 years old. It's totally awesome. Period. Hey, you know what else is totally awesome? A video I just put out. How do I thin my seedlings? Do seedlings need to be correctly spaced and so on and so forth? If that kind of information interests you, watch the video because I gave it a thumbs up, by the way. And that's a boom. Hope you got something out of the video. Times are changing. About to do a, an update with Paul Cottrell talking about that dangerous stuff that gets us demonetized. <laughs>
So keep calm and join us over there in a moment or else you'll be buried. Thanks to all of our Patreons. I put up two exclusive videos on Patreon for Patreons only, an hour and a half conversation with Paul Cottrell, a seven minute walkabout and behind the scenes at the ranch. And only members of Patreon can see that exclusive content because they deserve it. 